Hoi, I've got a ton of questions about my flail build and my flail great axe build in particular and I want to give you a guide for this. Now, as usual with any guide, I ran into the same problem. I want to give you as much information as possible, as many details as possible about all the specifics of the build and that just makes it a massive project and then while I'm trying to squeeze it together, I end up stun locking myself somehow and taking ages to finish it. So in order to combat that, we are making this multiple parts. Today we are specifically talking about the build. I'm going to show you the build in detail and discuss all the things that I think are important about the flail abilities in particular and a little bit about the great X abilities as well. In the next days, probably tomorrow, we'll then be talking about the gearing as well as the playstyle in general, all the other tips and tricks and maybe other weapon options too. If you want to see those next parts as well, then consider subscribing and clicking the bell if you're new to the channel. And if you like my work, you can support me further on Patreon. Let's have a look at the build. Now, there are some staple things here that never really change. And then there's a lot of flexibility beyond that. The first thing is Arcane Smite. This is the bread and butter of any engage, really. It is the cooldown increasing ability on enemies with Burdening Smite. So you always want to have this. The first upgrade here reduces the cooldown by 5% per target hit, which is not really that important, but we need it to get to the next one, which is Ironclad Superiority. This is the reason why we're using a Kite Shield, because this allows this ability to apply a stagger. It reduces the damage in return, but we don't really care about that. Flail doesn't really do that much damage. The stagger, the setup is what we're after. And last but not least, we're also taking Deflecting Frailty, which allows you to apply another Weaken. Uh, this is also something your teammates can utilize, uh, getting that extra lifesteal from it. It's not the most important perk of all, I would say, but still a pretty solid one to have. Kind of a why not? You can skip this in favor of other options if you prefer. Next, we have Barrage, and Barrage is probably the most underrated ability in terms of how we're using it here. The first upgrade that we're taking here is Defensive Rush. This gives you a 30% Fortify when hitting a target with any of Barrage's hits. This Fortify has a 2 second duration and every hit extends the duration of the status effect by 2 seconds to a maximum of 8 seconds. This is very important and we get back to that in a second. Because next we have Biting Superiority. This is kind of okay, it gives us a 20% slow uh, with the Kite Shield and that applies to the Bulldoze effect as well. But generally, it doesn't feel that noticeable. What we do want though, and why we're getting this, is Bulldoze. Bulldoze is arguably one of the strongest perks on the flail. It is so strong that Micro initially thought that it was a bug, so let's call it that. Bugdose allows you to charge through enemies and automatically block their incoming attacks while not consuming any stamina. And this has saved me so many times. So first of all, this is fantastic on engages because you're charging in, you're blocking automatically, enemies are still probably throwing some projectiles at you uh, as they do, and when they do that, they activate effects like counterattack on your shield because you are blocking and you have that buff immediately available before you even slam on the ground essentially. So very nice, very beneficial, and also if you find yourself at the edge of a very big group, this even worked very well in open world PvP in Zergs, kind of charging into them, kind of clipping along them, uh, as long as you're not getting CC'd, you are going to absorb all the damage that is flying at you. And it's the safest way to get out of a misposition, I would say, uh, that you have in the game. It is a relatively slow ability, but the block here offsets that pretty decently. Flayer to launch is pretty good as well, because it gives you that AoE fortify to allies within the radius, which also stays if you swap off to another weapon because it's a group buff. Uh, this is a 20% one for 8 seconds. And because this detonation effect is a separate instance of damage, it counts as an additional stack for defensive rush. So you immediately get the 4 seconds 30% fortify for yourself as well. A lot of mitigation right off the bat. Fantastic to just charge into the enemies and take all the damage, have a bunch of fortify and come in with a stagger too. Trip, I don't think I need to explain much. It doesn't do much damage by itself, but it knocks enemies down for a fairly long amount of time. Then the second perk here, not particularly important, reduces the damage over time effects on allies for every hit on the target. And then we have You've Got Flail, which is important. Hitting weakened targets with Trip will inflict 15% rend for 5 seconds on the target, which is why we are usually opening with Burning Smite, with Arcane Smite. So we have a weaken on the target guaranteed, and then we follow that up with Trip, 
so we immediately apply the rent and also get a fortify for ourselves. So that makes a combo barrage into a cane smite into trip, depending on how things go, unless you don't need barrage. And then you can follow the trip up with destabilize, which adds a guaranteed heavy attack if the target is on the ground. This heavy attack will apply all heavy attack debuffs, including things like plagued strikes. For the other perks, we are not taking oppressive advantage. I don't think it is that good, but we are taking weighted superiority, which gives us some extra cooldown reduction when blocking a hit since we're in heavy or when getting hit. It's for both, so you get this quite a lot. We're also usually taking Happy Flail, which gives you an exhaust when hitting an enemy with a basic attack within three seconds of using ability, which will always happen when we're using Trip anyways. Spike Impairment we're skipping because it's only above 90% health and only against melees, and in my opinion usually you get below 90% health before you reach the melees in many situations, so I don't think it's worth it. Most of the time we are above 50% health with this build because we're very tanky, so that's what you want to focus on. A Vile Embrace in that regard is okay with the duration increase for damage over time effects. Can be nice, I don't think it's too important. Leader of the Pack is an option to consider, it's something that I have been running. Uh, all flail attacks deal 10% more base damage or you empower allies nearby for 5%. I don't think it's bad, but also base damage increases for the flail aren't that great, so it depends more on how good your team is. Generally, I'm leaning more towards the right side. I think Vital Suppressant in particular is extremely strong uh, with the 4% absorption pretty much. As far as I'm aware, this is absorption. Uh, most of the time, that is just very, very potent and very noticeable if you test this. Cured Fairment is good in this particular build because, again, much like Happy Flails, this is something that procs on a heavy attack after using an ability in this case, uh, which we're automatically doing with Trip and with the follow-up from the Stabilize. So this stuff gets procced anyways and we get the impairment here, uh, so very useful. Reductive Superiority, in my opinion, is not worth it unless you specifically want to counter uh, debilitating effects. This can be useful in specific playstyles, but that's, in my opinion, more so for wars or similar. Flamera gives you 15 stamina while your stamina is below 30% when you use an ability with a 5 seconds cooldown. Overall, I would say that is fairly strong. You can proc that consistently enough for it to be worth it. Mitigated Protection is absolutely a strong perk. When blocking a hit, you get the tracking effect, uh, which gives you additional absorption. And with every blocked hit, this gets extended with up to 20% mitigation as health decreases. The reason we're not using this is because we're not really blocking that much. We're blocking a little bit at the start. And after that, we are mostly engaging on the enemy and CCing them. So we're not getting that much use out of this. Reinforced Vitality, in my opinion, is worth taking. This is a 25% of your physical armor being converted to health. And in my opinion, this is good enough since it's roughly equal to just about two health perks on your armor, depending on how exactly your build is set up, how much armor you have, how much health you have, but uh, in that ballpark. So I think it's worth considering, especially because it's also active while you're on your other weapon. If you play closely with an ally that you want to help, then you can of course opt into human shield. For the playstyle that I'm using here, it's usually too aggressive and too self-focused, so that's not worth it. But again, fair bit of flexibility here. You could go into this, you could go into this, you could go into this, and you could move various other points around in this area, depending on what exactly you prefer. Now, this is the Great Axe build I'm currently using. This is very flexible. I'm not going to go into detail for Great Axe here, but uh, one thing that I will say is that Keen Edge is very crucial because you really need to pull as much damage out of your crits as possible with this build. Uh, Bloodlust, in my opinion, very much mandatory. And you can swap out Whirlwind. You can go into a... Uh, graph well path if you want to have some more team utility you can go into execute if you want to have more single target burst i really like whirlwind but it also got some degree of nerf for small scale recently so i might switch it out uh, we'll see about that you do want to max out charge if you're using refreshing charge as well as i said in the next days we'll be talking about the gearing aspects and the playstyle and everything that comes with that so if you're interested in that too then consider subscribing and clicking the bell if you'd like to support me further, you can do so on Patreon and get early trading tips in return. I've been posting quite a couple lately. Thanks to all of my patrons, and thank you for watching. Duke Sloth, out.